All right, everybody. It's time for Nico to eat some crow because Andrew Yang endorsed Joe Biden last night live on CNN. We're going to talk about it, though. We're going to talk about it. Thanks for tuning in. So last night, after Joe Biden's victories in several primary states, including Michigan, Missouri, and Mississippi, Andrew Yang decided that it was time for him to endorse Joe Biden. Joe Biden. <sighs> we're going to let him talk about it. We're going to let him give his explanation, and then we're going to address it. I believe that Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee, and I've always said I'm going to support whoever the nominee is, so I hereby am endorsing Joe Biden to be not just the nominee for the Democratic Party, but the next president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And I say this, uh, having supported Bernie Sanders in 2016, Bernie was an inspiration for me, inspired my run. Uh, but the math says Joe is our prohibitive nominee. We need to bring the party together. Uh, we need to start working on defeating Donald Trump in the fall. I've had many personal conversations with Joe about the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on the middle class. I believe that he's the right man for the job to help us not just to feed Donald Trump, but govern the country in the years ahead. And the question is, I guess I have for you, is what does he need to do to bring the Yang gang and the Sanders folks yeah, to I mean, him? And what do you say to your supporters who, who yeah. might support Sanders? Still? What I'd say is that uh, we need to start doing the work of improving Americans' lives on the ground because too many Americans have seen their way of life disintegrate over the last number of years. And Bernie has been calling out those problems and tapping into the frustration in the right way. And so if Joe says this is going to be a return to business as usual, he's in danger of losing many of the young people that came out for Bernie that supported my campaign. He has to show that, look, we know that this economy is not working for many, many Americans, millions of Americans who feel left behind. And you can't just say we're going to swing the pendulum back to the Obama-Biden years. We have to actually start doing the work that activated people to vote for Donald Trump, that activated people to get out uh, for Bernie Sanders. I believe Joe is open to that message. Uh, his heart's in the right place. He's a really, really uh, patriotic, patriotic public. So, yeah, it was disappointing. It was disappointing. Uh, I, I'm pleased at the fact that he is still acknowledging the actual issues that are causing voters to go to Donald Trump. I am pleased that he discussed the fact that Bernie um, although Bernie isn't the only one, but Bernie Sanders is, uh, you know, Biden's quote unquote main opponent, if you will, even though Tulsa Gabbard is clearly still in this race and clearly still fighting and clear, clearly still filling up rooms. Um, but I'm glad that he still mentioned Bernie. I'm glad that he didn't try to erase Bernie Sanders. Uh, you know, I'm glad that I'm glad that Yang didn't pretend as if Joe Biden was entitled to his voters, Bernie's voters, or the new coalition of young voters that have come into the fold since 2015, 2016. So I'm glad about that. Um, I'm going to let Sagar actually kind of break down relatively how I felt whenever I initially heard Andrew Yang's endorsement. I think he does a pretty damn good job of making some some salient points. Just, you know, nothing malicious. It's just just a sincere level of disappointment. Let's check it out. Interesting to see that. Indeed, Andrew, Andrew Yang making some big um, news last night. What'd you make of it? Uh, I thought that I was a little surprised because I didn't think he would so quickly endure. I thought he would pull more like a Liz Warren in 2016 and wait until, you know, everything was officially decided. A Liz decided. Warren in 2020 a Liz as Warren well. Liz Warren in 2020 It's as just well. a Liz Warren. The, I mean, he is right. The math is prohibitively on uh, Joe Biden's side. I just think it's more it's fascinating to me because it, it goes a little bit against so much of the ethos of his campaign, mm -hmm. which was you can't just focus on beating Trump. You've got to understand why Trump was elected. He more than I think most people on that stage looked at the beating heart of what it was about workers and about why they decided to vote for Trump in 2016, the opioid crisis. I mean, he talked about America in a way that's as close to as I think like our worldview as anybody else. And that's just so antithesis 
to the antithesis of Biden. At the same, t- I mean, I just never painted Andrew Yang as a party uh, as a party loyalist, especially when forty one percent of his voters said for that they would would vote for Trump and said they wouldn't back anybody else in the Democratic contest. I got so many messages from you. Um, I think Sagar makes some absolutely fantastic points. Once again, he perfectly codifies exactly how I feel about this situation. Um, I do believe that Andrew Yang is actually an outsider. However, there is a reality, you know, something that I've said pretty often. Yang does have an ego. Granted, you have to have an ego if you're going to run for president of the United States, but I'm saying he does have a, a unique ego. Um, he is not completely selfless, which, you know, you can take it for what it is. It's not like he's an evil person. I'm not saying he's a bad person, but he's not as selfless as he sometimes would like people to believe. He is absolutely a careerist. He's an entrepreneur. Every step that he makes, even running for president, although his presidency could have benefited a lot of people, I'm absolutely positive about that. UBI is a great policy. However, um, if it would if it wouldn't have been beneficial for Yang to run for president, he would not have done so. That's just the type of pragmatist he is, for better or for worse. But with that being said, Biden has discussed over and over again how we cannot return to the days of old. I don't know if you all have been following Yang. I know a lot of people are just now tuning in, but he said this over and over again. He talks about the trade deals that Joe Biden Uh, and many others have voted for. But of course, Joe Biden is one of the ones who are are here right now running for president that won't even own up and apologize for what those trade deals did to the Rust Belt. Now, of course, he also talks about automation. Automation is an extremely important aspect of how these jobs got lost. But Joe Biden has, at least to my understanding, shown no he he showed no dedication to addressing that issue at all. Like even talking about it. So that's two things that clearly separate Yang's message up until this point. And then com- directly conflicts, of course, w- with him endorsing Joe Biden. Now, Yang also said this. He said that UBI, he said that UBI was like the make or break for his endorsement. As you've probably noticed by now, almost, I would say all the major players, like the major surrogates in Andrew Yang's campaign, or at least the ones on social media who have been the most outspoken and even have blue check marks, the major surrogates have gotten behind Tulsi Gabbard because she is the only one left out of the three candidates who've endorsed UBI. But many people would have understood, of course, if Andrew Yang would have at least endorsed Bernie Sanders, he did not do so. Some people would have even been a little bit more understanding if he didn't endorse anybody. Whatever, cool. I mean, it wouldn't be cool, but we would have liked to see you get into the fight. That's not what happened, though. That's not what happened. You, you ran, or excuse me, you said that Bernie inspired your run, which, by the way, commendable. Commendable. You said that uh, you voted for Bernie in 2016, you endorsed him. You were very supportive of him. Throughout this entire election, you, you spoke very positively of him. Unfortunately, you spoke positively of everybody. So I'm not sure how much weight that is. But I, I still believe that if he was in the race and Bernie was winning, Bernie would absolutely get Yang's delegates. However, here comes the other issue. Yang is speaking as if. He is speaking as if the math legitimately works out so that Biden is like the clear, clear front runner. Ladies and gentlemen, First of all, California hasn't even finished counting, neither has Washington. Second of all, we have a huge, massively important debate coming up on the 15th. Then of course, on the 17th, you have the next big Super Tuesday with over 500, actually closer to 600 delegates up for grabs. It's a lot. With that being, and then, of course, if they split that down the middle, right? Say if half, a little bit over half, goes to Biden or Bernie, the other half goes to the other person, you're still almost in the exact same position that you were in. Then you got to go into another round where it's really, really close. 
Then if it doesn't get decided there, if it doesn't get decided there, well then ladies and gentlemen, you go into Pennsylvania, which a lot of people would call the Rust Belt, part of the Rust Belt, it's where Pittsburgh is, you know. Uh, then you go in also into New York. That's April 28th. I think Pennsylvania has a couple of hundred delegates and then of course New York has over 300. The math is currently favoring Joe Biden, but going forward, there is no more Michigan. Well, excuse me, Michigan was a, is a whole different situation. We'll discuss that in another segment, but there is no more Missouri's, you know, Arkansas, Tennessee's. The biggest advantage that Joe Biden has right now is Florida. That could change tremendously by the end of the 15th if Bernie does his job. But the courageous thing for, for Andrew Yang would have, would have been to endorse Bernie rather than trying to pile on while he is down. Now, I do believe that there is actually a, a much more simple and pragmatic explanation for this. Some people think that he's going for a position in his campaign. I actually don't think that's the case. I think that talking is one of like, Yang's favorite pastimes. And I think him getting paid literally millions to do so by working on CNN. Uh, like that's a dream for him. I truly believe that. He also has a nonprofit that that he is starting. That if he was like an official member of an administration, it could be a conflict of interest, and he would have to he would have to kind of completely remove himself from that nonprofit in very early stages. So I don't think he would do that. I think it's actually a much more simple explanation is, um, than what people think. CAA is a talent agency that Robbie Yeager from the MCSC Network uncovered. Is, is being ran by very, very staunch establishment figures. A lot of people belong to this talent agency. Uh, and this is the same talent agency, of course, that said they would quote unquote, bring the hammer down, if you will, on Tulsa Gabbard when she endorsed Bernie Sanders. Uh, and it was revealed in WikiLeaks, right? Okay. People like Anderson Cooper belong to this. Uh, Simone D. Sanders belongs to this. Alyssa Milano belongs to this. You know who also belongs to this? Joe Biden, I don't know if you all knew that. You know who also belongs to this firm, or this talent agency as of March 5th, 2020? Andrew Yang and, and his wife, Evelyn Yang. They signed with CAA for representation. Why do you think Alyssa Milano went from a full on Bernie bro to a full on Biden, I'm not going to say the word I want to say because she get on my nerves, but I ain't going to talk about it like that. Why do you think that is? And then it, the moment she went to Biden, she went from having like no shows, no offers, no anything to new show on Hulu, TV time all the time. The, the resist crowd is embracing her now. She was part of the Me Too movement and completely threw, it, threw the movement under the bus to push Joe Biden and was rewarded for it. Uh, Andrew Yang and his wife signed to CAA, same company. And who does he endorse? Well, his fellow CAA talent, Joe Biden. And of course, he was rewarded for that. I mean, you think that CNN, like the, the thing with CNN is like coincidental? No, it's not. He drops and like the man was on CNN like the next day. You don't sign to a talent agency in, a, in 24 hours. It's under the discussion, which for Yang supporters should make you question something else completely. Like, uh, hold on, if you were talking to CAA about representation you end up on CNN the next day. How dedicated were you to fighting uh, for each and every one of our votes? So, um, like I said, it does suck. I like Andrew Yang, I really do. Uh, I just, like I like him as a person. I'm glad that he didn't try to like to, to talk trash about Bernie. Um, you know, he didn't even look like his heart was in that endorsement. But uh, this is where you where progressive icons are made in moments like these 
when the chips are down, which way do you fall? Which way do you go? Are you going to make the principled stance that doesn't seem pragmatic at the time, but usually ends up paying off, by the way? Even AOC realized that, and she's not the most politically savvy. She endorsed Bernie right on his heart attack. That was a PR mastermind move. Like, it was a power move. Because either way, you, you come out on top. You still play the field, because she still plays the field with Elizabeth Warren. She just hedged her bets by endorsing Bernie because she knows she understands where her bread is buttered. When you have 44% of your supporters saying they're going to vote for Trump if it's not Andrew Yang, you're killing your base by endorsing the very ideology you ran to defeat. And that's my take. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you like that segment of Mikasa Sukasa. Of course, if YouTube is giving you trouble, as it always does, you can download the Rockfin app and follow us there. Also, if you want to continue to help our show grow, you can help us reach our goal of 500 patrons on Patreon and donate as little as a dollar. Really, anything helps. Other than that, always remember people more than anything else. Find your balance. Peace.